Redacted is a roguelike that's set within the Callisto Protocol universe. Yes, first we had the MCU, then the DCEU, and now finally, we have the CPU. It's safe to say that not many games have been as influential as Callisto Protocol. No, wait, that's. No, that's, that's not right. Hades. No game has been as influential on roguelikes as Hades. Supreme visuals, a well crafted story, exceptional dialogue wrapped around a well designed and fun core gameplay loop. It's easy to see why it's been so influential. Pick up a roguelike today, and more likely than not, you'll feel that influence within the game. But how much Hades influences too much? Redacted is very much a game of two halves. One side clings to the Greek lord of the underworld, while the other, quite like Zagreus, looks to break free from his father's home. So let's look at open square brackets, redacted close square brackets, and what it does that's new and fresh, and what it does that's borrowed and old, and see how it all comes together. Redacted is a massive departure from the tone and feel of Callisto Protocol, to the point where I wonder why even relate the two at all. Characters quip and make more pop culture references than your favourite Avenger. I, I understood that reference. Even though the game is set in the grim darkness of the 24th century. You play as a guard in the Black Iron Intergalactic Prison, which is like Super Jail from Super Jail, but a lot less fun. You're in Super Jail, and you're a criminal! A zombie outbreak has hit the prison, and you and the uninfected, and the partially infected It's just me, uh, Bob, from accounting are scrambling for the final escape pod, fighting across four biomes, against multiple bosses and mini-bosses, you're competing against these rivals and the clock to make it off-world. As mentioned, Redacted is heavily inspired by its muse, Hades. Hades is all over this game, and is even directly referenced in the dialogue. Sometimes it can feel reductive to bring up Hades when discussing a roguelike, as everyone seems to take at least something from Hades. But here, there's a lot. Each run starts in a training area with your available moves of your chosen weapon on the right hand side of the screen, along with your various currencies, both in-run credits and various meta-progression currencies. You have a dash and a dash attack, which is very Hades. Each room in a run displays their rewards above the doors. Between biomes, there's an option to swap out your suit, aka your trinket, and use the shop. Boons, or experiments as they're known here, come in various different flavors. These can be upgraded across the run with its own loot room, which is far rarer than the Palms of Power in Hades. Some upgrades are only available from the shop, which appears before each boss. Boons can also be sold between biomes in these rooms as well. So yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that's lifted verbatim from Hades. But how does Redacted flesh out this very familiar skeleton? Let's start with the rival system. As you race for the escape pod, you square off against three other survivors of the outbreak, both directly and indirectly. Using a series of Helldiver 2-esque button prompts, you can send hazards to disrupt their runs while they occasionally return the favor. During a run, you gather intel on your rivals to improve your odds against them in the direct showdowns, where you're locked in a room together in a far more fast and violent version of Seven Minutes in Heaven. Usually, at least early on, this isn't enough time to strike a killing blow, but once you do, that takes the rival out of contention, at least for that run. I wasn't too sure about this setup at first. I'm not one to be rushed, but the characters grew on me, I started getting into the clearing rooms as quickly as possible, and it definitely created its own atmosphere, its own feel to these runs. The last corpse system is also something a bit different, and not something I've come across at least recently. If you've come across something similar, do let me know in the comments down below, because it's an aspect I really enjoyed. In most roguelikes, outside of something like Rogue Legacy, you play as a character that's usually stuck in some sort of time loop. You have the ability to die and, and come back to life. Here, the guard you play as is unique to each run. Once they die, they die. And when you make it back to where you died previously with a new guard, sometimes you'll come across your own zombified remains. Defeating your former self gives you a choice of one of their upgrades and a burst of healing. 
There's nothing quite like defeating your former self to show how far you've progressed during a game. Let's talk about something that I rarely touch on in these videos, and that's character handling. Striking a balance between realism and arcade is difficult, and Redacted manages it perfectly. Your character movement feels weighty and realistic, as well as fast and frantic, at the same time. Something I hate about roguelikes, and especially survival likes, they're the worst for committing this sin, is where you have a character that snaps to where you're looking to, in different directions. I'm looking at you right now, Swan. I'm looking at you. It feels awful, it feels terrible. Redacted's guards, they turn properly, and it's a small detail I really appreciate. It gives your character a far more tangible feel. The action in general is solid. The shooting is punchy, the melee is hard hitting, and the movement, as mentioned, is slick. The environmental design is top tier. Levels are dotted with hazards and traps, yes, just like Hades, but I was taken aback when I threw something at an enemy and it missed, and it landed on the walkway on the floor below. If I can find it, I'll put the video here. But it was not just a flat void, and that was such a nice attention to detail. It just made the world feel so much more tangible than if I just thrown it off and it just disappeared forever. Uh, it, was, it was really cool. The totality of the game is pretty big. A wide range of weapons and enemies, your rivals are fully voiced, each with their own style and personality. One of my biggest gripes in gaming is unvoiced dialogue. And I know, I understand, I play a lot of indie games and that's expensive to do and it bumps up the size of the download and all that jazz. But I just hate having to read walls of text, especially dialogue. It can really grate away my interest in a story. But here the number of voice lines is huge, and the writing is solid too. A few of the lines didn't land for me, and I wasn't a fan of all the pop culture references as it really didn't work with the setting of the game. But beyond that, it was all good stuff. Outside of the occasional voice line, the main turnoff for me in the game was the amount of meta progression. The number of meta currencies, the number of items requiring meta currencies, was just daunting. Every weapon, every stat change, every suit, every change in level, every new action to use against your rivals, all requiring huge numbers of runs, and it was just disappointing. I had the same issue with Hades 2 when it first launched, and demanded so many resource gathering runs. That was patched pretty quickly, and I hope that Redacted follows suit. So at the end of the day, I think Redacted does just enough to differentiate itself from Hades and other action roguelikes. The rival system is unlike anything I've played in a roguelike before. The game really emphasizes speed. You have to be fast and deadly to succeed. Your power-ups will help you keep pace, but if you fall too far behind, your rivals will leave you in their dust. It's a really interesting spin on the genre. Mechanically, it all works well together to make an enjoyable experience. Do I wish the meta progression was toned down a little? Sure. But I don't know if that's more of a personal preference thing than something inherently wrong with the game. If you have the time and effort to invest, and this game really gels with you, then you can just get way more game to grind through. But if you, like me, bounce around games a lot, variety is a spice of life kind of gamer, you'll get a pretty solid core experience too. But what is your favorite meta progression currency in all of gaming? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for the wonderful gift of your time. I know the world can suck at times, so I hope that this video has brightened your day or distracted you even just for a little bit. We'll be back. I think at time of writing, I know exactly what our next game is going to be. So I'll see you there. Fare thee well.